Hello and welcome to this video on fugacity calculations. By the end of this video you will be able to calculate fugacity from an equation of state and calculate fugacity using tabulated data. So our starting point here is the definition of fugacity and also the fugacity coefficient. And so the two equations that we have for calculating fugacity from an equation of state are the two equations down the bottom, excuse me. So our first equation here and our second equation here and so the choice is dictated by the type of equation of state that we have. Either a V equals equation of state or a P equals equation of state. So in this example uh, or in this running example we're going to be looking at this uh, equation here because we're going to be using a pressure equals equation of state. And so the example that we're doing is looking at the the van der Waals equation of state and trying to come up with an expression for the fugacity coefficient. And so what we've got here is the uh, the equation for the van der Waals equation of state and then the equation from the previous slide for the fugacity coefficient. And so what I'm going to do now is substitute the equation of state into here and then start working through the solution. So first of all, uh, substituting in. And so when I do that, I get this equation here. Now I can simplify this uh, a little bit once I start doing the integration. So I'll, I'll integrate uh, this uh, equation here and so what this gives us is this equation here where I've just done the integration and so now I can simplify these two terms here by putting them together. And so now we have to look at what happens at our integrating bound. So we're integrating between volume equals infinity and uh, volume equals V up here. Now at infinity what we get is because uh, this is very large and this is very large this whole term here tends to 1 and then the log of 1 of course is 0. Over here a divided by V if V is infinite then this term is 0 as well. So what this then leaves us with is this expression here where we're just left with the volume that we're actually interested in. And so then we can take the uh, exponential of both sides and so sorry I've just noticed that I've left something out here so there should be an RT up here. So, so now if I take the exponential of both sides then what I'm left with is my fugacity coefficient is equal to uh, the exponential and I'm just going to bring this uh, this one on RT here uh, into the inside and so what that gives me is uh, the log of uh, V on V minus B which is my final expression for the fugacity coefficient. Okay, so so it's just a case of substituting in the equation of state, integrating, and then that gives you an equation for the fugacity coefficient. So we will calculate the fugacity here for uh, for ethane using the van der Waals equation of state at 330 Kelvin and 5 megapascals. Okay, so 5 megapascals is the pressure, but we're wanting to find out what the fugacity is. First of all, we need the critical parameters for, uh, sorry, uh, we need the critical parameters for, uh, for ethane, so the critical temperature, the critical pressure. What that then allows us to calculate are the constants for the equation of state, so first of all A, uh, and then we can calculate B as well. 
once we have A and we have B, so we know the pressure, 5 megapascals, we know the gas constant, of course, we know the temperature. So all we're left with as an unknown is the, the volume. And so we can solve for what the volume is for this uh, equation of state and at this temperature and pressure. And so what we find is that the volume, so this is using F-solve in MATLAB or solver in Excel, is equal to uh, 3.6 meters cubed per mole. Now to, now to use this in the equation on the previous slide, so we're wanting to use it in this equation here, not only do we need to know V, okay, which we use in a couple of spots, we also need to know what Z is equal to. So if we go back to our definition of Z, the compressibility, so Z is equal to the real volume divided by the ideal gas volume and so that's equal to uh, pressure times by the real volume divided by RT so P on RT is just the ideal gas volume and so for this set of numbers then the compressibility works out to be 0 0.656 so now that I know the uh, the volume and now that I know the compressibility, I can just substitute these things into this equation, uh, into this equation here, to calculate my fugacity coefficient. And so when I do all that, then the fugacity coefficient that I get is equal to uh, 0 0.75 which then in turn gives me a fugacity equal to 3.75 megapascals. Okay, and so, so all this is within the range of what I'm expecting. Moderate temperature and pressure, so I expect the fugacity coefficient to be less than one. And then that in turn gives me a reasonable number for fugacity, which isn't are hugely different from the pressure but it's clearly lower okay so so that's calculating fugacity using an equation of state now we can also calculate the fugacity using data from NIST so to calculate the fugacity coefficient using the data from NIST then what we're going to use is the equation just using the the definition of the uh, the fugacity and the fugacity coefficient, where the fugacity coefficient is the uh, Gibbs departure or Gibbs real minus Gibbs ideal divided by RT. So to, to calculate this Gibbs departure, then we're just using the, the definition of Gibbs free energy, okay, extended to Gibbs departure. And so our job now is to calculate each of the H departure and S departure which we've done previously, but we'll go through here. So, so my H departure is H real minus uh, H star. And so from my table up here, so I've got my data at five megapascals and also at one pascal. So, so five megapascals is my real data. So my H there is 18.587. And then my ideal uh, enthalpy is uh, that at one pascal, so 21.848. And so that gives me a uh, departure enthalpy of negative uh, 3.261 uh, kilojoules per mole. And so this is a negative number, and this is what I expect, okay? I expect my H to departure to be negative as long as the pressure and temperature aren't really, really high. Now my S departure is a little bit trickier because I need to correct for pressure. So if I do that, and so this is using a calculation that we've used previously where we're using the, we're saying that the ideal gas entropy at five megapascals is the ideal gas entropy at one pascal 
plus the change in the ideal gas entropy from one pascal to uh, five times 10 to the six pascals. So when we substitute these in and make the calculations then, so the, the one pascal data is just up here, so we can just put that in straight away. So this is just 203.57 minus Okay, and then that's just the log of uh, five times 10 to the six. Okay, so uh, if we move to the next slide then, then my uh, ideal gas entropy at uh, five megapascals is equal to 75.27 uh, joules per mole Kelvin okay so now that I've got that I can calculate my uh, s departure so s departure is equal to my real s so if I go back a step sorry I've gone back too many steps so my my real s is here so 67.945 Okay, so uh, 67.945 minus 75.27. Okay, so that's equal to negative joules per mole Kelvin. Okay, negative again, as we would expect. And so my Gibbs departure is given by so substituting in those values then then I get a Gibbs free energy departure of uh, negative uh, 844 joules per mole and then substituting that into my equation for um, for the uh, fugacity coefficient so exponential of which is equal to uh, 0 0.74 okay so this uh, happens to work out very close to the van der Waals equation of state which is really just a coincidence and so then our fugacity is equal to our fugacity coefficient times rate pressure which is 5 megapascals in this case which gives us uh, 3.67 megapascals cool so which is uh which is very good okay thanks for your time